Northwestern, we can be ranked in the top 15 in the country and people like don't really pay attention. That's maybe why I haven't heard of Joe. Gaziano's coming, and he wraps him up. Taking the quarterback down for a sack is one of the best feelings that I've ever known. Here comes pressure, and Joe Gaziano levels Art Sitkowski. My two favorite sounds that I've ever heard in my life. The offensive tackle saying, watch out, as you turn the corner and beat him. That is second to the quarterback grunting when you hit him. Joe's a freak show athlete. He's got great quickness when he comes off the ball. He's got great functional strength, high, high level of football IQ, uh, and just plays with a relentless motor. He just keeps playing, keeps playing, keeps playing. That's one of his calling cards. Joe's not going to run a 4 4 40. He's never going to be the biggest or the strongest or the fastest. But he is just, just so good at knowing situations and so good at like, using his strengths to his advantage. I've seen people game plan for him because he's a force. When he's in a groove and he's playing well, he's one of the hardest people to block in the country. Growing up, Joe played everything, but he really focused on two sports, football and lacrosse. He was an all-state lacrosse player and a second-team All-American, so he's a pretty good lacrosse player. Lacrosse was a big part of my life for a long time. It's a lot quicker game. The lateral cuts that you have to make as a defender kind of force you to be agile on your feet, and as a D lineman, that's not necessarily something that's first instinct, so I had to work really hard at it, and it kind of translated to the football field as well. We love to recruit well-rounded guys, play multiple sports, do different things, because when they get to the collegiate level, then they're gonna get better, they're gonna improve, they're not at their ceiling, and you know, Joe's a great example of that. I might be a little underrated, but that's how I felt my entire life. Being from Massachusetts, being from Situate, not a lot of people are thinking, oh, this kid's gonna do well, this kid's gonna, you know, go Division One. Okay, well, I did that. And then people are saying, oh, you're never gonna start at Northwestern. Okay, well, I did that. People are saying, you're never going to lead the Big Ten in sacks. OK, well, I did that. People are saying, oh, you're never going to go on to play in the NFL. That's just fueling my fire. This summer, I got married on June 16th to Audrey Gross. We've been dating for seven years, ever since our sophomore years of high school. Our families knew each other before Clayton and I were really even together. We went to the same church. We had never been on any dates, just us two before. But then he picked me up and thought we were just going to get to hang out kind of one-on-one, -on -one, start to get to know each other even better. And we're sitting actually at a red light. We've been in the car for about four minutes. And he turns to me and he's like, do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> and before even going on our first date, we were dating. And that's just Clayton to the T, once he has his mind set on something, he's going to go for it. From there, we went on our first date and have been together since then. <laughs> Watching them make the transition to marriage, it's been really neat because we feel like someone is right there for Clayton who knows him so well. On Fridays, she'll leave notes for me. It's actually real encouraging. A couple things, you know, just remember this about yourself. And so, so she's been, um, she's been a big encouragement for me. It's funny living with Clayton because oftentimes people think that you're living with a guy now, so you're gonna have to get used to the mess. But if you look into our bedroom, my stuff it can be a little bit messy, but Clayton's is perfectly folded. I think that's been one of the funniest things living with him. I always knew that was true, but the way that he prepares for games is, you know very planned out, very methodical, that really does translate into most elements of his life. <laughs> On the football side, I've been kind of surprised actually with how much of a benefit it has been for us to be married. It allows me to focus a little more and you know, it's not like I have to be on FaceTime for you know an hour every night. It's great to just have her there. Is this all more of the same as far as Consciousness of guilt where there's deception in, in the defendant's statement and there was deception. My dad's a Supreme Court Justice on the Massachusetts Supreme Court. I'm extremely proud of where he's at today. You have to work hard to be on the Supreme Court. It doesn't just happen overnight. To be able to have uh, a role model like that and someone that I can talk to every day and lean on in times of adversity is very advantageous for me. I've been really successful with both my children, Kara and Joe. 
and both have absolutely zero interest in the law. There was a time I wrote a fairly lengthy decision on a topic we had discussed, so I emailed it. Then I asked Joe, I said, well, did you read that court decision? He said, yeah, I read, it said Gaziano comma J, which, which stands for judge. He goes, I thought that was cool, then I stopped reading. My dad passed on his passion for the game at a young age. Him and his twin brother played at Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. My dad was a will linebacker, um, so that's where I get my quickness from is what he tells me. Um, and my uncle was a, um, he was a center, so he tells me that's where I get my, my strength from. My college career is not as decorated as Joe's, off, but by any stretch of the imagination, I actually led the team in tackles two years in a row. But it was a different era. The football was much more basic. As a linebacker, you just got to mug the receivers. His dad, he'll never play five. And he'll say, hey, JB, you had a great block on this play, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't even remember. Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he, like, and I'll watch it in film, and I'll see, oh, wow, he's, he's right. I have never played in a football game in my life where my dad was not at the game. We really work our schedules around trying to get to the game writing decisions on the airplane. I'm writing decisions in the airport. It's very much an escape to sit down and watch football, to hang out with the other parents. It means the world to me to step out onto the field and if I don't necessarily see them in the stands wearing purple, I know that they're there. And it you know, gives me comfort when I step onto the field. I'm from Lamont, Illinois. My household was was pretty pretty entertaining to say the least. I grew up the youngest of six. We have six children. Um, they are named in alphabetical order. We decided that we would um, make it easy. So when I got older, I'd remember the names. The oldest is Aaron. From there, we had Brett, and then we had Connor, C, and then Derek is D. E, Erica, and then finally F is Flynn. We do have a G, and that is our dog, Gunner. I wasn't allowed to have a dog until the kids were kind of out of the house, so my wife finally let me have a G. <laughs> All six of our kids have been able to play collegiate sports. We've had four play football, and our daughter played softball for Loyola. We had one son that was a wrestler for SIU Edwardsville. Being the youngest, you know, it's, it had its positives and its negatives. I definitely got beat up the most, definitely got knocked down the most, but I think the experience of seeing my older brothers get recruited, um, I think that was really great. Flynn is eight years younger than Aaron. Aaron was being recruited by a recruiting coordinator named Pat Fitzgerald from Northwestern, and Flynn saw that. He saw me take Aaron to visits, and it left such an impression on him. And then next came Brett, and unfortunately battled through a ton of injuries, and it was, you know, really unfortunate because really talented guy. And then a little bit of a gap, right? And, uh, and then we get to Flynn. My brothers, the best advice they gave me was not to waste the opportunity that I had in front of me. And I think that's the, the best piece of advice they could have given me. Over the years, with some of the regimens that my husband set up for my kids, I would say they, they did things because they knew that that was expected. But Flynn sincerely always wanted to do it. He always put in the work, and he's waited his turn, and I'm thrilled that he's having a great senior season. We have an opportunity to win the Big Ten West. That's my main focus. I don't care if I don't have a catch the rest of the season. If we win out, I'll be much happier than if we let this season slip out of our hands. The only thing that matters right now is our focus is on how we prepare, and then are we able to take it with us in the Kinnick and play our best game of the year. It's a man's game today! So we'll see what Clayton Thorson and company can get done here in the third quarter. 
Down by three. Here's Bowser running left, and Bowser finds room 30, 25, he's gone, 10, 5, touchdown! Isaiah Bowser takes it in, and the Wildcats take the lead. Kelly Martin is the tailback, play fake to him, Stanley wants it all, goes down the middle of the field, caught, touchdown Iowa by Amir Smith-Marset. Same old, same old, these two just really slugging it out. Now that we go to the fourth quarter, it's 10-7 in favor of the Hawkeyes. And so the Hawkeyes go three and out, the Wildcats will get the ball back. Rastetter on to punt yet again. Line drive pick. And it'll be fielded by Flynn Nagel. Nagel's got some room to run to the 40. Breaks a tackle, 45-50. Still on his feet and fighting down inside the 50-yard line to about the 46. Flynn Nagel took that line drive punt and returned it into Iowa territory to the Wildcats are in business. First time they've started in Hawkeyes territory. Dorsey the throw on first down protection's good. Waits on the left side, going towards the end zone. Touchdown! What a catch by Bennett Skoranek, who laid out for the ball, and the Wildcats have regained the lead. If the Wildcats can hang on, they will win the Big Ten West. So the Wildcats need their defense to keep playing the way they've been playing. Good game. Iowa needs a touchdown, not a field goal. They will hand it off, and the running back fumbles the football, and the Wildcats have it. It's all over. And the Northwestern Wildcats are Big Ten West champions for the first time. Wisconsin lost, Purdue lost, we won! That's what we've been talking about. Just each step of the way, just getting better each week, right? And you guys are proof that if you do that with a great attitude and a relentless work ethic, with the brotherhood as a glue, nothing can break that bond. Nothing can break that bond. Yep. Pick that thing up. learned so much through tearing my ACL. And I was like, man, Lord, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, what's the reason for this? You know, I was hoping to use that game. You know, our team wins. Hopefully I play well. Everything leading up into next year is, you know, we got this great quarterback coming back. About three days after that happened, Clayton said to me, he said, you know, Dad, I guess the Lord has a plan for me. That's how he is. He just went, okay, this has happened. Let's put our nose to the grindstone and get ready. You kind of start to know how long it's supposed to take. And we're looking out, looking at the calendar going, okay, we know when Purdue is, you know, August 30th. He made a, a pretty bold statement, I'm going to start the opener. And to be relentless in that rehab was really inspiring. Clayton Thorson, now we get the confirmation, he does take the field. He makes his season debut coming off that knee injury in the bowl game. 
Thorson downfield. Kind of a back shoulder throw and it's caught. That is exactly what you want if you're Northwestern. Each week he just got stronger and stronger. Towards the corner, it's caught, it's touchdown. Northwestern reclaims the lead. This weekend, 51st career start. That type of durability is unheard of in this league. Thorson to throw on first half, protection's good. Wings the left side, going towards the end zone. Touchdown! What a catch! Long after all the records, long after all the wins, it's just the way that he carried himself with the work ethic. That will be the legacy. It's all over. The Wildcats are going Andy. Jersey number one, that's the greatest honor you can get here. It's above being a captain. The number one is a given out recruiting here at Northwestern Echoes to the Wildcat. The young man that represents our program from a value standpoint and everything that we believe in. Coach Fitz brings it up to the captains every year who we want to wear jersey number one. This year, Chad was brought up for jersey number one. When I first arrived on campus, I was on the video staff. My high school career, I played as a slot receiver. That was something I always wanted to do, is to continue playing football as long as I could. Being behind the camera made me so much hungrier to join the team. Uh, I first remember him in the video office. See him passing in the hallways. And in the weight room, actually. He would come in and work out, and I started to talk to him. He just was like, you know, I want to work hard and, and you know, hopefully earn a spot here. And then all of a sudden, I see him out at a winter workout. And I'm like, what's the video guy doing at the workout? My sophomore year. I was able to join the team. I remember that morning, got a lot of weird looks. He was just flying around, going a million miles an hour, and just made a really lasting first impression. My first three seasons on the team, I was primarily just a scout team guy. He's been relentless in his pursuit of finding a role on our team. Chad, unfortunately, has earned a snap increase by other guys you know, getting injured. I don't think Chad would want this opportunity because other guys got hurt, but he knew he had to step up for his teammates. He's willing to do anything for the team. If it was video to start, to a big third down run in Iowa City. Hanaoka bursting inside the 40. Chad Hanaoka and that jersey number one. He's the Wildcat for a reason. Chad Hanaoka can prove to any young person in high school, if your dream and goal is to play big time college football, don't be denied. I'm from Sydney, Ohio. Small town. It's about an hour and a half west of Columbus. Sydney's known for the for the blue collar workers. To make a living, they gotta they gotta use their hands. Um, they gotta get up in the morning. They gotta go grab the lunch pail. And they gotta go do their job. I think that's gotten into Isaiah's blood over the years because people don't understand how hard he really works to get where he is. About 2010, 2009, um, you know, as a school district, we were uh, pretty hard financially. That's about the same time that, you know, the country was kind of going through a recession. When that kind of stuff starts to happen, it's, it's hard to uh, keep people around. You know, I don't blame a lot of parents for trying to find a better school district that might have been financially uh, better at that time. I point blank asked him, do you want to go to another school? He says, no, I want to stay here. We're going to be pretty good. In our school's history, we only had one playoff team in 1989 up until 2017. Bringing my school to the, to the state playoffs um, for the first time in about 30 years was incredible, you know. This is Buckeye country. And people in town, they talk about him today now. Hey, um, we're going to watch Northwestern this weekend. You know, we're going to we're this. We're buying a purple jersey, this and that. I guarantee you, nobody knew who Northwestern was until he went there this year. When they secured the right to go to the Big Ten championship game, I got inundated with emails and phone calls and text messages asking, "Where's everybody going? And where are we meeting at?" The AAA group in town uh, already had a bus that was sold out before they even knew the Buckeyes was going to be in the game. The main goal eight, nine years ago when we were having those problems in the school district was we got to stop people from leaving. 
I'm sure it might have crossed that family's mind to move somewhere else, but at some point they said, you know what, we're going to stay here. And that meant a lot to our program, it meant a lot to our school district because I can succeed here. And he's a poster kid for the community. I grew up on Oahu, about 20 minutes outside of Honolulu, which is the state capital. You know, growing up, I was always going to University of Hawaii football games. My husband and I were both University of Hawaii graduates, and we had season tickets ever since we were in college. And when the kids were maybe two or three, we started taking them to games. And Chad, he was maybe one of the only of the three boys that we have that really took an interest into it. The football culture is central, I think, to the identity of the people of Hawaii. The way that players play with passion and this essence of a team being a family. A lot of people have probably heard the term ohana. That, that's the essence of the islands, is, is the importance of family and honoring your family and leaning on each other in difficult times and being there for one another. Football is almost an extension of that. Before the recruiting process, I'd never really heard of Northwestern. At Northwestern, there aren't a whole lot of Hawaii kids that, that come here, so um, I knew that I'd you know, have to immerse myself in a, in a completely foreign environment. The biggest adjustment was definitely the weather, and then also just being so far from home. But having the support system that I have up here has really allowed me to just be able to grow kind of on my own, while also still having you know, the support that I have at home. My parents and my family, they'll typically come up for one week a year to catch two games. This Saturday, walking out of the tunnel at Ryan Field for one last time with my parents in my arms will really just be the culmination of a lot of years of sacrifice that they've made to allow me to pursue my dreams here at Northwestern. And it'll just be Really great to share that moment with them. Our running back from Honolulu, Hawaii, number one, Chad Hataoka. He's joined on the field by his parents, Terry and Wayne Hataoka. It is the regular season finale for the Northwestern Wildcats. But today, a very important matchup with their in-state rivals, the Fighting Illini, in the battle for the Land of Lincoln Trophy. A quarterback from Wheaton, Illinois, number 18, Clinton Thorson. But the Wildcats quarterback, Clayton Thorson, make his 51st career start here today, his final home game. Of one of Tell me back in 2014, and I'm going to start 50 straight games, going on 51, um, going into senior day. I would have been like, man, sign me up. That sounds awesome. You know, I think the best thing about it has been, I felt like I've done it the right way, and I've done it with some pretty cool people. Here's the snap. They'll give Hanaoka up the middle, 30, 25, 20. And Chad Hanaoka in his final home game just continues to get the job done when called upon. Snap to Clayton Thorson. Looks to throw. Thorson throwing to the end zone. Touchdown! Second touchdown pass today for Clayton Thorson. It's all over. There is still... More football to be played for the Northwestern Wildcats, who will play for the Big Ten Championship next week. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We're incredibly grateful for all that you've done, and more importantly, who you guys are. And your legacy will live on long after you have these pads on. So I want you guys to soak it all in here. And all we need is us, okay? So take it all in, guys. I'm proud of you, okay?